So I got I got to cut this piece of plate is too long, so I got to I got to take this off. I got to move this motor, and then I have to cut this half inch plate like right there, all like nine feet off the ground. Great day. You have questions? How do you do this? Wow. I, do. I don't know. Ahead, Just so figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Which camera am I looking at? This one? Yeah, this will be the one. Uh, my name is Chris Zeppieri, also known as Make Everything Shop, and I am a fabricator and an educator. And there's a mosquito right in front of me. Um, and I'm at my shop here in Long Island, New York. I mainly do fabricating work and custom building. And the main kind of focus here at the shop is to create educational YouTube content and Instagram content to show people how I make stuff so they can do it themselves. Oh, it's perfect. You're my lucky charm, dude. This, things never work this well. So I live on Long Island, uh, specifically on the North Shore, kind of closer to the city. Um, it's a pretty cool little community of artists and people that kind of share a similar mindset. It's an old Victorian village where I live now called Seacliff. And Long Island itself has a really rich manufacturing heritage with a lot of aerospace and you know craftspeople throughout history. So it's, it's a cool place to be and I meet a lot of really interesting people, a lot of interesting old timers that share tons of knowledge and it's been really valuable. Can I just like close it? Do I have to talk? I don't want to talk about it. It's a f***ing gate. Watch a video on my YouTube. It's got a nice view behind it. Okay. What do I say? I made this gate. I made, <laughs> I made that. So growing up, my dad had a little shop in our garage. My, my dad was never like a trade professional, but he always kind of worked on our house and other people's houses, kind of doing repairs and flipping and stuff. So he taught me from a super young age how to use tools and the value of being able to build things. And my mom is an interior designer, so there's always been that sense of recreating spaces and repurposing items. My mom would point at a wall in the house and be like, I think we should get rid of that wall. And then by the end of the weekend, it was gone or we needed to add a set of French doors to change a room. And me and my dad, Friday night at seven o'clock would be on our way to Home Depot. Sunday night, we'd, we'd be finished. So I kind of took that mentality and moved forward into my adult life and basically do the same thing now. As soon as I was old enough, got a job in construction, started working as a carpenter and a handyman. I went to college for art and design so I could kind of hone those skills. I you know, thought I wanted to be a filmmaker and animator, but quickly realized that I like building the stuff for the videos more than I like making the videos. And now I kind of get to do both. I love Twix and I posted on my Instagram that if anybody wanted me to do favors for them, because I don't drink, that they could stop bringing like six packs and just bring me little bags like a little bag of Twix. So my friend who I, I did all the for the restaurant for, she brought me a five pound bag of Twix to make, make up for all the favors I've done her. So about six years ago, a friend of mine were working on a scaffold talking about our future plans. And I talked about how I'd always envisioned and dreamed of having a, a workshop where I could teach people and you know do bigger projects. And, and then that day I was on Craigslist looking for rental space. It took me probably a year to find the shop that I'm in now. And then when I did find this place, it had been vacant for seven or eight years, had been flooding and disgusting. It had no electricity when I moved in. And then through a ton of effort, a lot of money and time and help from a lot of really good friends, I turned it into this. It's about 2,800 square feet. It's broken up into a, a wood shop, a metal shop and a machine shop and you know, I'm able to do everything here. I've got metal CNC, wood CNC, water jet, laser, welding gear, blacksmithing stuff. I mean, there's nothing I don't have. And if, there, if, if a project comes up and I need something, if you follow along, you know I'll just go and get it, so. This shop has been great and it's been an amazing learning experience, but the biggest issue that I have here is that the summer and fall hurricane season here on Long Island really keeps me on my toes. Um, this shop has a bad history of flooding to the point where, you know, in the summer months, I sleep with one eye open just listening for the hurricane alert to go off so I can run down here in my like high waters 
and get the pumps out and it's become this sort of running joke. It's kind of part of the story now and I think when I'm done here, I'll become some sort of like floodwater consultant, but I don't know. It builds character, right? No, no challenge too difficult. The water's all the way up. I got water coming into the machine shop. It's an, un, it's an unbelievable amount of water. I'm standing on the life raft right now. Oh, we just lost power. Now I gotta go get the generator. The van is the best thing that I ever bought. And now we get to go look at some guy who's selling some old equipment. And if I want to buy it, you and me will just pick it up and put it right in the van. So I have a real love and respect for, for tools of all kinds. It's something that I love since I was like a little kid. You know, I like to learn by doing. So whenever I see like a YouTube video or photos of a machine that I think would be helpful, or even if I take on a project that I'm like, oh, this thing, this tool would make it easier. I don't hesitate to go and get it. And if I don't know how to use it, I'll just figure it out. A Yankee drill press vise. I got a can't twist clamp and I got a decimal chart. This is a good decimal chart, but a better decimal chart is the type that you stick on your phone that you can buy at makeeverythingshop.com. It's something that, you know, I would rather have the tool here. So when the project comes up, it's already ready to go versus then trying to acquire it. So I have a lot of tools here, some which, get used once a year, but there's something about having them all, you know, knowing how they work and being prepared for that next thing that, I don't know, I, I really enjoy it. And I love fixing and restoring them too. So that's kind of part of the process. Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and this might be the craziest thing that I've ever built. Check it out. I think that the most rewarding projects that I do are the ones that are super challenging and unique. One of my favorite projects I think I've ever done was when uh, we built this ramp that went on top of like a Econoline van, right? And it was a video on my YouTube channel. It's one of the worst performing videos on my YouTube channel. Somebody came to me with like not even a drawing, like literally a phone call where my friend who's a professional BMX rider goes, hey, is there any way we can do this? And like, before we were even off the phone, I was already drawing it on a piece of paper thinking like, how am I gonna do this? And like, it immediately kicked off my brain into like, all right, I gotta call this person and ask them a question. About now, I, now I gotta go online and calculate the weight. And now I'm looking up like what the suspension of this van can hold. And after weeks of doing it, seeing it work, like perfect is the only way I could describe the way it functioned because it worked better than I ever could have imagined and I guessed my way through most of it, you know? And I say all the time, like, I'd rather be lucky than good because that's the kind of thing where, you know, we, we just happen to like roll the tube the perfect way and it was just the right weight. And um, those are the kind of projects where, like, I want to do that every day. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. So it's exciting when you make your first coffee table. It's not so exciting when you make your 10th. But when you make your first ramp on a van, it's, it's amazing. So I want to do that and that's the kind of stuff that really keeps me keeps me motivated and keeps me exciting the, the challenge of the next thing. And also just getting better. So like recently I I really wanted to make a pair of scissors. So I ordered some material and I spent 2 days turning a railroad spike into a pair of scissors. It wasn't for anyone. It was just for me and I had so much fun doing it that I was like waking up extra early to get here before work to work on them. It's so funny when people come to the shop, they're like, oh, do you have anything you made here? I'm like, no, I don't make it to keep it in the shop. It's that next thing. It's that honing of a skill and trying something new that really keeps me like wanting to be here as much as I possibly can. Stupid ass. I had always wanted to make YouTube videos and Jimmy Duresta is you know, a huge inspiration for me and, and all the kind of guys that I feel like are in his sort of generation of that, you know, like Bob Claggett and the Wood Whisperer and um, you know, the other sort of makers from that kind of beginning YouTube era, April and Izzy Swan. So I had been watching their content and I had this background in video and animation that I had done through my whole life of you know, doing various different things. 
So making content seemed like an extension of what I was doing. Um, Jimmy was a huge inspiration for me and I honestly, I think that without his help, I wouldn't have the success that I have now. He gave me a, a shout out in one of his vlog videos once and it pushed my channel in a way that I don't, I don't know how it would happen other than that. Aside though is that bump only gets you so far. It, being consistent has been really, I think, important for me and sharing the passion that I have for the work that I do and that, you know, I am really here doing everything myself and, and learning as I go, being really honest with the audience, I feel like has done well. And it's, it's open doors for me that I can't even, I couldn't even imagine would have been opened otherwise. I have found tremendous support in everything that I do here uh, from a lot of different sources, right? My friends and family, you know, my, my immediate family has always kind of been behind me on this kind of stuff. And, you know, my wife and my friends, like they're here to help me. My, my friends that come and help me at the shop, I don't know what I would do without some of these people that come here and help me on a moment's notice sometimes. And then on top of that, I get such great support from the community of people, some that I've met, some that I'll never meet on online that leave me amazing comments and send me emails and support what I'm doing. And then on the flip side of that is everybody that writes a nasty comment, if you don't already know, just keep doing it because it just makes me want to go harder and do more of the things that are driving you crazy. <laughs> I love it. It would look it, it looks great because of these amazing skylight planters that are here. Well, the skylights are amazing. They bring in the natural light, yes. and I hate yeah. the artificial light. Well, I, yeah, I made the I made the bread rack, which we modeled after a French bread rack that Chelsea had found online at like an auction, but it wasn't obviously something we could buy, so we just sort of adapted and made our own thing, and then also we made these skylight planters to kind of bring some plantings up but not reduce the amount of light that came in and then also all the planters that run around the perimeter of the buildings. Oh and the brackets that those lamps are on. And I did all the structural steel in the basement too but you don't get to see that. So this isn't my full-time job being here. I mean it, it takes full-time hours but I do have a regular job too. Um, I'm a, basically a construction consultant for a larger commercial developer and it's something that I've kind of worked through my whole life to kind of make it to this point. You know, I've been a handyman, a laborer, a trim carpenter up to a kind of foreman and project manager. And now I run, you know, many projects all over the country and even in other countries. And it's, it's something that I'm passionate about outside of here, right? I, I love to see building going on and watching it at this scale has been really cool. So it all sort of tailors in, right? It's, it's not so far off from what I do day to day, but it's definitely not so hands-on. And then I get to satisfy that, you know, hand to hand need here at the shop. I don't have any employees. I don't employ. <laughs> We're an equal opportunity employer, meaning that everyone has an equal opportunity not to work here. Everyone has the same chance to not get a job. I look at my life and my kind of path here very long term and I think that having those long term goals are what motivates me to really push to be here. You know, some days I'm here at 5.30 in the morning and I don't leave until 10 o'clock at night and I do work during the day, right? So some days I get here at 5.30 and then at 8.30, 8.45 I head to work and then at 5 p.m. I'm changing my clothes and, and heading back. So it's that knowing that all that I've done so far is, is working towards something. It's like putting little pieces on this pile for this massive goal. And as I get a little bit more successful, like every week, every month, things get a little bit better and a little bit easier to support. It makes me realize that like it's, it's all for something, you know, it's at the, at the micro level, it's hard to see, but at the macro level, it's, it's all turning into something really beautiful. There's been a lot of milestones in sort of this business and, and running the shop and 
it's funny how things kind of come all at once. So, you know, I was on a, I was on a TV show, a History Channel show called Assembly Required, and you know, I was a contestant on one episode, and I won that, which was an, an awesome an awesome experience, and it felt great to you know win something like that. I I was featured in a magazine with Lincoln Electric, and you know, even just milestones on YouTube, you know, reaching subscriber marks and all that stuff. But honestly, I think the biggest accomplishment that makes me proud here is that. You know, anyone that started a business, right? It took me years to not have to take money out of my paycheck that I made at my job and pay to keep this place alive. And now to be able to be here and know that this place supports itself is the biggest accomplishment, the biggest kind of prize I could ever ask for. I've learned a lot about how to do this, do what I do, and I think there's a lot of people that have the desire to like make content or start a business, but they, they have a job and they have obligations. You know, some people, and I, I see it on YouTube and Instagram all the time, they're like, you gotta quit, you gotta just go full tilt. You know, like, you know, you can do it. Just, if you're not, if you're not fully committed, you're never gonna succeed. You don't have to like eat ramen noodles every week to support your like YouTube habit before it's successful. I don't believe that. I just think that people lack the understanding in how much they can get done in a day. Right, You have a lot of time and if you want to do this, if you want to be successful, you just have to do it, right? You don't have to take your weekend off from your day job and do nothing, right? If you want to build a business, you can do it. I work 14 hours a day on Saturdays and Sundays, right? So that's 28 hours. That's more than most people work at a part-time job. 28 hours, you can get a lot of work done. I don't think anybody has an excuse and I think that Part of what I do here motivates other people and re to realize that they can have all this, right? I have never not had a job when I've had this shop for six years. I have worked full time, if not full time and more, and I've still found the time to, to do all this. So I'm careful with what I say on social media to talk about success because some people, they get turned off by it, but you know what? Like, if my success motivates someone else to do something, then I'm happy to talk about it, you know, like why not? And the reason that I have found success here is from feeding off the success of my friends and the people that I look up to, you know, like I've mentioned him before and, and I'll say his name a million times because he's helped me so much, but you know, Jimmy Duresta doesn't stop for a minute. As good as things go for him, as, as things get just better and better for him, you know, he's more and more successful, if anyone thinks that he slows down, you're a fool. He works more than anybody I know, and he's probably more successful than most of those people too. So you have to keep grinding, and consistency is, is your biggest ally, right? If you stay consistent, you keep going, you'll find success. You know, it, it just comes after time. I think that one of the things that I find you know, I get a lot of messages and I try to answer, you know, all the messages that I get, people asking for advice. I think one of the things that people get stuck on and I feel like has been something that I learned at a young age, uh, but I, it was so important and I don't really think I realized when I learned it was that being skilled in multiple disciplines is like the most important thing that you can do, right? And I know there are people that, you know, they want to be like a fine woodworker, they want to be a metal sculptor or whatever, a CNC machine or something like that. Like, you should learn how to do those things. You should be as good at them as you can be, but there's no reason you should not try to learn something else. Like if I told you the number of cabinet makers that I know that wouldn't know what to do with a piece of metal, you know, if I, if I put it in their hand, that's not helping you, right? So be diverse, watch videos and read about things that you might never do. Ask questions to people that do things that you know, you'll never do uh, or maybe you never thought you wanted to do because every little bit of that knowledge has helped me in my path. And I always tell people like, just don't be afraid to try it. You know, just, just give it a shot. Find somebody that's good at something that you wanna learn Ask them a couple questions, see if you can hang out in their shop for a day. The, the stuff that you'll get out of that will be more valuable than any class you can do or thing, you know, you sign up for a workshop. Like, you gotta, you gotta do it yourself. Um, don't, don't get bogged down in the learning before the doing. You know, you, you gotta just try. And 
I feel like we're at a point right now with all the access to information we have that you could learn how to do anything. So I think that people need to take advantage of that and don't be afraid to ask someone that you look up to for help because, you know, I wouldn't be anywhere without the, the people that I idolized helping me. And, you know, we're all here to, we're all here for the same goal, so why not just ask and see where it leads. Okay, I walk in my mom's house and she's like, do I need to put something on the chair? And I'm like, yeah, she has white fabric, like, chairs. I'm like, yeah, so she gets a fucking, like, shitty ripped up towel and puts it on the chair. She's like, how many, one or two? If I'm really dirty, it's two towels. One for, like, the backs of my legs and then one for my back. Oh, I'll, I'll be making forever. I have no intention of stopping, ever. Don't fucking call my cell phone though. <laughs> Never call me on my cell phone and ask for help. I think that's rude. I don't, I think calling somebody on their cell phone and asking for help is weird. You know, like, fine, email me. I don't know. Well, you, you never realize how much you need a bathroom until you realize how much you need a bathroom. You know what I mean?